Good morning. Richard, you're, you're well known and respected for ha having a master hand, but how difficult or how easy was it to do Tata Nelson Mandela? Oh, it was completely intimidating. Intimidating because here we had the most famous man on the planet, a man with enormous charisma and a man who obviously had greatness in abundance. Where does an artist start with something like that? And um, I, I suppose I, the, the, the sittings started off on a very good note because Mr. Mandela was one of those extraordinary people that had that common touch. So conversation with him was, was easy going. We had people in common. And if anything, he probably calmed me down in order that I could <laughs> sort of concentrate on recording his fantastic features. Um, you're used to paying you used to painting um, well-known people, people uh, that, are, that, that are famous for a host of things. But how different, and I just want to, from an artist's perspective, from a mindset perspective, was it to do this private sitting with, with uh, Tata Nelson Mandela? Well, actually, there were several private sittings. In, in fact, I was privileged to have six one-hour sittings with him. Um, in batches of three, but separated by, by a couple of months. And in fact, the, the study that's coming up for sale at Stefan Veltz uh, tomorrow evening uh, here in Cape Town was the result of the first three sittings. It gave me a chance to sort of not just begin to understand and observe his features, but actually get a greater understanding of the man. And it's during those sittings where we both relax in each, each other's company that you build a bond, a trust. And it was, well, it was actually extremely special insofar as that once that trust had been established, Mr. Mandela felt comfortable enough to open a sort of little, a little window into his soul. And I think this is why the portrait is remarkable insofar as he actually gave me a considerable amount of time. I mean, it was very rare for him to sit for a portrait. And for me to have been in that extraordinary position, um, one I'd actually always dreamed of, never quite believing it would happen, um, it has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. It might be a very difficult question for you to answer, but you, you mentioned that there were those brief moments where you had an opportunity to see um, um, Tata Nelson Mandela's soul. How were you then able to capture that likeness on, 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 on paint and make sure that it's reflected for the world to see? And, and here today, you're in, in South Africa and we're about to auction off that painting. Well, I like to think a lot of it is instinct. I'm not a magician. But I think if you feel comfortable with your sitter and your sitter can sort of reveal a little of himself and you get a sort of better understanding of, of uh, what the man is all about. Um, an artist, of course, has to uh, represent um, the, the features accurately. It is a given that the portrait has to be a likeness. But a portrait, a real portrait, has to be so much more than that. It's not just looking like the sitter, but it has to feel like them. And so, therefore, it is this experience of being in someone's presence um, and beginning to sort of uh, get a, an angle on their lives and begin to understand what they were all about. And I think what took me a little by surprise was the stillness in Mr. Mandela. That very quiet dignity was famous, of course. You can't sort of set out to sort of paint charisma. But what you do sense, and actually what was very powerful during those sittings, was that very quiet, dignified presence that he'd got. Yeah. And once I was able to sort of seize on that aspect, I think it helped the work enormously. But Mr. Mandela was more than generous with just these one-hour sessions that yeah. he was giving me. He was very keen for me to begin to understand his South, his South Africa and what yeah. South Africa meant to him. And this was the special bit. Um, he arranged that his driver should take me out and about and around Cape Town and into Soweto to um, meet people that would give me a much better understanding of this very great country and to begin to understand his dream and aspirations for this country. And um, I was so deeply affected by that. And, of course, this is why 
it's a very, very special moment for me yeah. to be back here to support the sale of this, this study with the, the money being, if you want, my contribution to Mr Mandela's legacy. Yeah. Just a quick question, final question from us. How much are you expected to raise of this portrait in the auction tonight? Well, on the uh, 21st of February. Uh, it's, uh, yes, it, it, it's tomorrow evening, the auction yeah. here How in Cape Town. How much expected to raise? Um, we, 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 we actually, we don't know. The, the, the finished portrait itself in London went for, for close to a million US dollars. Whatever that is in current day rand, it's, it's got to be close, I would have thought, about 10 million rand. An astonishing sum of money. Um, it's very difficult to quantify something like this. I just hope with the international love, support and respect that we have for Mr Mandela, that there will be some very generous people out there who will want to make a big public statement in order that we can, as I say, continue sure. uh, Mr Mandela's legacy. Richard, we're going to leave it there, but thank you very much for joining us. That, of course, is Britain's most famous royal portrait uh, artist, Richard Stone, who's done a private sitting with Tata Nelson Mandela, and that, of, that auction will be held tomorrow on Tuesday, 25th of February, at the Seven Wells and Company in Constantia, Cape Town. As you heard, some of the portraits have gone for 10 million rand. We take an ad break. We're back after this.